So let's start with our second chapter, motion in a straight line. So the first thing is rest. So an object is said to be at rest when it doesn't change its position with time and with respect to its surroundings, right? So I'm sitting here, okay? So I am not changing my position with respect to my surroundings, that is this table or this device in front of me, right? So I'm not changing my position with this of these objects or surroundings as well as with time, right? So I am at rest now. Now, what is motion? An object is said to be in motion when it changes its position with respect to time and with respect to its surroundings, okay? So of course, motion and rest are relative, right? So a person sitting in a moving train is at rest with respect to the fellow passengers, right? So if we both are sitting in a train, right? So for me, you are sitting, you are at rest. For you, I am sitting, I am at rest. But for the people who are seeing from outside, the moving train, for them, we all are in motion, right? So why? Because we are moving with respect to the surrounding trees or whatever the environment is, right? Now coming to this trip, Displacement versus distance, right? So distance versus displacement. So this is a differentiation, right? So what is distance? It is the actual distance covered by an object, right? What is displacement? It is the shortest distance from the initial position to final position. For example, your pre-college, right? Or your school is around five kilometers from your home, right? If you go through the road, Okay, if you go by the road, but if you have, you have a short garden path, which will just take you in one kilometer, right? So, which is one kilometer directly straight to your school, right? So, of course, this whole five kilometer, if you go, this is the distance traveled, right? You travel that distance, but, okay, but after traveling this distance, what was the shortest path? The shortest path was one kilometer. So, this shortest path is called the displacement, okay? So distance is a scalar quantity. That means it only has magnitude. That is a number. It does not follow any direction. It does not follow any vector addition rules, right? But whereas displacement, it is a vector quantity, right? Direction depends. It depends on direction as well. Magnitude as well as direction, right? Distance is always positive. Displacement can be positive, negative or zero as well, right? For example, you have a circular garden, right? We'll draw it. So we, you have a circular garden, okay? You walked five rounds and you're fully tired, right? So what is the distance you have walked? You have walked five times the circumference of the circle, right? Five times the whole circle, right? It is the distance traveled. But what is the displacement you did? Zero. Why does it, why is it zero? Because you started from this point and you again came back to this point only. So what is the shortest distance from the initial to final point? It is zero, right? So displacement is zero, okay? Distance is always greater than or equal to displacement and always displacement is lesser than or equal to distance. So these were some differentiation points. Now coming to speed and velocity. Okay, so here firstly we have uniform speed. So what is uniform speed? When an object covers equal distances and equal intervals of time, it is referred to as uniform speed, right? So as you can see, this is the graph, variable speed. So when an object covers unequal distances and equal intervals of time, that is, for example, uniform speed is what you cover every one kilometer in one hour. This is uniform but in the same one hour intervals, you in first hour you travel one kilometer, second hour you travel two kilometers, right? So this is the unequal distances, but in equal intervals of time. This is referred to as variable speed. So this graph is a bit kind of curve, right? So coming to average speed. Yeah. So average speed, that is V average, what is speed first of all? It is distance by time, right? So what is average speed? Total distance by total time. Simple, right? So S1 plus S2 plus S3 up to N divided by T1 plus T2 plus T3 up to N, right? So case one, in this case one, what is that case one? It is if we have different distances and different speeds, 
and time is not mentioned, then how to find average velocity? So we have this formula that is the speed is equal to distance by time, right? Here, distance is S, okay? It is represented by S, okay? So we have speed is equal to distance by time. So I'll just take this time over here, okay? And this velocity will come over here. Then I will get a new equation. That is time is equal to distance by velocity, right? So this same formula I'll put here in this equation where I am not having the time values, right? So again, same the distance quality, the distance S1 quantity, S1, S2, S3 up to Sn, right? N terms and instead of T time, because I don't have the time, I'll substitute S1 by V1 plus S2 by V2 plus S3 by V3, okay? So what if in the same case, right? In the same case, our distances are equal, right? If our distances are equal, what will happen? This all will be same. This will be this will be s one plus f plus s plus s plus s plus s up to n, right? What would it become? S plus s s plus s plus s up to n, right? That is s into n. I can say, right? So, and below what it will become? It would be s by v one plus s by v two, similarly, right? So here, when we take the LCM, what will we get? We will take S common. Okay. Yeah. If we take out S as common from both as the numerator as well as denominator, in numerator already we have S into N, right? In denominator, we'll take S common because all the S are same, right? This S is also same. This S is also same. This is also same. So what I'll get, I will have 1 by V1 plus 1 by V2, right? So, considering two orbits, okay? okay, 1 by V2. Okay, so I'm taking the LCM. What will happen? V2 plus V1. Right? V2 plus V1 by V1, V2. Right? And above I'll have this as this is cancelled. I'll have N. Right? That is here, what is N? It is 2. Right? S plus S. Right. So, what I am getting here, that is 2V1, this V1, V2 will go up. I am getting 2V1, V2 divided by V1 plus V2. Or in a simpler form, I will get it as N by average velocity, that is, in this case, it is 2, right? So, 2 by that average velocity is equal to 1 by V plus 1 by 2, V2 and so on up to 1 by Vn, right? So this kind of formula is known as harmonic mean of the individual speeds for the n terms, okay? Now coming to, if we have different speeds and different time intervals, but the distance is not mentioned in this case, right? Here, we don't have the distance, so I'm taking t over here, I'll get s is equal to vt, okay? From a simple formula, we'll get everything. So what is our V average? It is, instead of S1, I am writing V1, T1, right? Follow up this formula. So I am getting V1, T1 plus V2, T2 plus V3, T3. Similarly, till N terms, right? Now coming to case 4. Equal time intervals, but different speeds. And then time is not mentioned. So here we will take our normal arithmetic mean to find the average speed for the different speeds given. Right now, coming to instantaneous speed. What is instantaneous speed? V instantaneous is equal to limit delta t tending to zero delta x by delta t, which is dx by dt. So, in simple form, instantaneous speed is the speed that a speed of an object at a given instant of time, right? Or at a particular point of its path, right? So, it is defined as the limiting value of average speed. In a small interval of time, delta t taken around that instant, provided delta t tending to zero. Now, what does this mean? So, it is defined. What is the instantaneous velocity or speed? So, instantaneous velocity means that it is the velocity at that instant 
right and it is calculated with the formula that is limit delta t tending to zero what is delta t it is the change in velocity change in time so the change in time at that instant is tending to zero because at that instant means then and there there is no change in time right so delta t tending to zero and of course velocity means it is distance by time so in simple form it can be written as derivative of x by derivative of t right or d by dt of x differentiation of x that is distance with respect to time okay now coming to velocity till now we were discussing about speed right that only has magnitude so how we discussed only about distance and displacement here right so similarly we can discuss about speed and velocity speed is also a scalar quantity it is always positive and displacement is a vector quantity it can be positive negative or zero so till now we all discussed about speed right instantaneous speed okay what are the graphs now we will discuss about velocity that is vector v is equal to vector s plus vector s by t now what does this vector mean it means that the quantity depends upon the direction as well right now coming to uniform velocity or uniform motion an object is said to be in uniform motion if its velocity is uniform that is it covers equal displacements in equal intervals of time of course vector vector quantity displacement is also vector and velocity is also vector so it will not consider distance instead it will consider displacement right so v that is vector v is equal to the change in the displacement that is x2 minus x1 both are vectors this arrow represent vectors right and divided by t2 by t2 minus t1 time is never a vector quantity okay time cannot be negative right now no force is required for an object to be in uniform motion right so if a football okay it is moving in a not in a no, frictionless floor on a frictionless floor right so it will continuously move right so after a long long time it will get stopped right and that too because of some obstacles so there is no need for us to go and again and again give a force in a frictionless floor i am talking about a frictionless floor right now coming to non uniform velocity or motion so when an object covers e unequal displacements in equal intervals of time it is called average velocity we calculate average velocity for this right so it is total displacement by total time taken coming to instantaneous velocity we had instantaneous speed similarly we have instantaneous velocity so v is equal to limit delta t tending to zero delta s by delta t which is vector v at that instant okay at that instant right now coming to graphical representation of this velocity and speed so slope of xt that is distance time graph gives us velocity slope of velocity time graph gives us acceleration and area under this acceleration time graph gives us the change in velocity so these are the very very important uh, points that can also be asked in mcqs now coming to acceleration what is acceleration it is change in velocity by time taken right or i can say rate of change of an object's velocity right so in what is instantaneous acceleration again so remember whenever instantaneous word comes you have to apply limit delta t right tending to zero and again the simple formula that is change in velocity by change in time right which will give me a dv by dt derivative of that a uh, thing that is in acceleration it is velocity in velocity it is distance right so derivative with respect to time now graphical representation of a motion of a body at rest okay now what is slope actually slope of something or a graph is tan theta whatever the theta or angle is formed we have to take the tangent of it right so what is tan theta in this case it is 0 degree right the angle we had made with the x or time axis is 0 degree right so the instantaneous velocity at this instant is zero so here we have some theta here right so here it is not zero here it is some constant value okay 
In the second case, that is uniform velocity. Now coming to non-uniform velocity. In this, we have two cases. As time increases, d by dx, dx by dt, that is velocity, also increases in non-uniform velocity, right? So if this theta increases, velocity increases. Now what is this theta again? This is theta. If this theta increases, as you can see, here it is increased, right? So as this theta increases, the velocity also increases. That is, the slope tan theta increases, right? And here in case 2, if we see, as time decreases, dx by dt also decreases. Tan theta, which is the slope, which is velocity, also decreases, right? Now, coming to the next thing. Uniform velocity, but it is having negative velocity, <clears throat> right? So, slope of xd graph, that is, position time graph will give us velocity, Position, displacement, distance are all referred to x only in the case of graphs, right? So, when theta is greater than 90, then tan theta is negative. See, here, when the velocity is negative, so of course, we'll go, the graph will go downwards, right? So, when the graph goes downwards, its angle made is, of course, more than 90, right? This is an obtuse angle, more than 90. So, when we talk about tan theta and theta is more than 90, then we will get the value as negative. So here the slope is negative velocity and acceleration is decreasing uniformly with time. Now coming to non-zero initial velocity. When we are having non-zero initial velocity, that is the start of the substance, that is start of the velocity, right? Starting of a car is not zero. Okay, we are considering some speed in the initial point, right? When t is equal to zero, time is equal to zero, zero seconds, then we are considering some speed. The initial velocity is not zero. Then the object is moving with constant acceleration, right? So the graph goes like this, okay? Now coming to the derivations of equations of uniformly accelerated motion. So these three equations are again the same thing that we did in our ninth standard, right? So again, let's revise them. First is the velocity time relation. That is V is equal to U plus AT. Right. So how to derive this? Speed of the VT graph gives acceleration as we know. Slope of the VT graph gives acceleration as we know. So here, this distance is U. Okay. You need to remember the diagram perfectly. This distance is U. Okay. At T is equal to 0, the speed initial velocity is U. Right. Initial velocity is U. And when T is equal to some T seconds, the initial velocity becomes v, this one, right? So when I consider this as theta and I want tan theta, right? Tangent of that angle if I want. So what I will get? Yeah, if I want tangent of this theta, what is tangent? It is opposite by adjacent. So what is opposite? Opposite, opposite is b, e. And this whole thing is v. And if this small thing is u, then what is B E? It is V minus U, right? V minus U, right? That is this. And adjacent is what? A E, which is time T seconds. So, which is T minus 0. That is T at final position and 0 at initial position, right? So, I am getting this as acceleration. Tan theta is what? Slope. Slope of V T graphs gives acceleration, right? So, I have v minus u is equal to a t. That is, this minus u, I'll take that side, I'll get v is equal to u plus a t. Right? So, this is how to derive our first relation, that is velocity time relation. Now, coming to second one, that is position time relation. Right? Now, the same graph we'll consider. Taking area under this v t graph will give us displacement. First case, we had taken slope. Right, this slope. But in the second case, we are taking this area under this graph. That will give us the displacement. Right? So, taking that area, what will we get? Area of a trapezium. So, we are considering first a triangle here and then a rectangular surface here. Right? So, what is the area of triangle? Half into base into height. Base is AE. Right? A is the base. B is the height. Now, again, A is time t, B is V minus U, right? So, time t and V minus U. 
right again we have area of this rectangle what is that length into breadth right what is length u right and what is the breadth again time t right so from this formula we got to know that our displacement s is equal to ut that is from here plus half at square now coming to the last relation third one that is position velocity relation so again, we are taking the same graph in that, but we are just applying a different formula. That is here also S is equal to area of trapezium. That is displacement. But we are directly applying the area of trapezium formula here. That is, what is the area of trapezium formula? It is half into AF plus BC. What is AF? It is the sum of the parallel sides into the height or the perpendicular side right into fc that is height or the perpendicular side right so we have half of af plus bc into fc now what is our af af is u what is our bc it is v right and what is fc it is time right so what we have here we have our equation as af that is u plus bc that is v into time that is v plus u and what is time again so we had our first equation right here you can refer from our first equation we have v is equal to u plus at u plus at right so this u plus at what i will do i will shift this u that side it will become v minus u right at is equal to v minus u i will i will get so this t I'll shift that side and this a I'll shift that side because I want my time, right? So what I'll get here time, I'll substitute this equation that is v minus u by a. So of course, a plus b into a minus b is a square minus b square, right? So s is equal to b square minus u square by 2a. So this 2a, I'll take that side, I'll get v square minus u square is equal to 2as. Okay, now coming to distance traveled by a uniformly accelerated body in the nth second. Okay, so finding the distance traveled by a uniformly accelerated body in some nth second. So, S of n is the distance covered in n seconds. Okay, okay, I'm covering a distance of 1 kilometer in 2 seconds, let's assume. Okay, so here SM would be what? 1 kilometer, right? And N is 2 seconds. Okay, similarly, S n minus 1 is the distance covered in n minus 1 second. Right? So, what is dn? dn is the distance traveled in nth second. That is the last second. How much is the distance traveled in the last second? So, how will I get to know the distance traveled before that 1 second? Minus, okay, the distance traveled in the whole n 10 seconds minus the distance traveled in 8 seconds. So, then what I will get? Distance traveled in the 9th second I will get. Right? So, I will substitute it like this. So, SN I will write it as UN. Right? So, plus half AN square minus in bracket UN minus 1 plus half N minus 1 whole square. So, this is the formula for SN. I got this. That is UN plus half AN square. Right? And similarly for n minus 1, I am getting u n minus 1 plus half n minus 1 whole square. Now, doing all the a square plus b square minus 2 ab. So, what we will get? Yeah, this u n, u n, half a n square, half a n square minus here u into n, u into n minus u, minus u as you can compare here. Now, half first n minus 1 whole square I will do a square plus b square minus 2ab. Okay, so outside I am having half, right? Half a. So, again what I will get here? This half a, I will multiply it with this one, right? So, what I will get? un plus half a n square minus un, okay? Substituting minus inside. So, minus un minus minus plus plus u plus minus again minus half a n square minus half a plus a n. So, I will cut off u plus u n minus u n 
plus half an square minus half an square. So my final answer of for d n that is distance traveled in a particular nth second is u plus a n minus half a n. That is u plus a by two into two n minus one. So these are some standard equations and how they change according to a free fall or downward falling or vertically or if an object is falling downwards and vertically if an object is moving upwards okay so v plus v is equal to u plus a t in free fall what it will become when it when an object is falling freely okay when you leave an object freely if i consider this rubber band okay i'm leaving it freely then without any initial velocity i can leave it right so u becomes zero v is equal to g t similarly when i am when an object is coming vertically downwards right so this is not a free fall. This is not coming down with the help of gravity. I am just releasing it with some initial velocity. So it is V is equal to U plus GT, right? If I'm releasing it vertically upwards, then of course I have to apply some initial velocity to move it upwards, right? So similarly, you can apply such real life examples and understand these equations. Now coming to time of ascent. Now, what is time of ascent? It is the time taken to reach the maximum height. Okay, if I throw this rubber band. Now, the maximum height reached by it is around 50 centimeters, right? So, if this 50 centimeters is to reach, how much time did it take? This is the time of ascent. Okay, what is time of descent? To reach, okay, reaching is ascent. Coming down again is the time of descent. Okay, so with calculating it with the help of V is equal to U plus A T. So what we'll get T? T is equal. And here, time of ascent means what? At H max, the velocity is zero, right? Final velocity, when it goes up, upmost point, topmost point, the final velocity is zero, right? When final velocity is zero, in this equation, V becomes zero, right? So my T would be equal to U by G, where the minus sign meant acceleration is also minus. Right, so our T is U by G. And what is the H max? That is the maximum height. It is U square by 2G. Okay, so firstly, velocity as half of the H max. Okay, so if this is the H max, okay, so what is the velocity at this half point? It is U by 2. And velocity at the 3 fourth of H max here, there also it is U by 2 only. Now coming to time of descent. Okay. So time of descent is also equal to time of ascent. So here are some extra formulas about the ratios in the case of freely falling body. Right. Distance traveled in first, second and third second. And distance traveled in first, one second, two seconds and three seconds. Here you can understand the difference. In first second, second second and third second. But in first second, it's different. 1 is to 3 is to 5 into 7, right? But when I talk about in 1 second, in 2 seconds, that 2 seconds also includes the first 1 second, right? So, it is a different concept. You need to read it carefully, right? So, you can go through these formulas. These are extra derived formulas already. Now, if a body is dropped from a height h above the ground, it reaches the ground after time t, okay? These are also the same extra formulas. Now coming to relative velocity, which, are, which is our last topic. Okay. So these all above were the extra formulas which were derived. Right. So relative velocities. Relative velocity of an object with respect to another object is the velocity with which one object moves with respect to another object. Right. So for example, VAB is equal to VA minus VB. That is velocity of object A with respect to B, which means that, okay, VAB is velocity of A with respect to object B, right? If I consider my two hands, if this is right hand is A, left hand is B, right? So these two are moving and velocity of first right hand with respect to the left hand, right? So this is the relative velocity, right? Similarly, if I consider VBA, that is velocity of object B with respect to A, right? So, this is VBA which is equal to VB minus VA. These are again extra formulas. Okay, these are repeated pages. Yeah. So, in this 
relative velocity we have two cases objects moving in the same direction if my both the hands are moving in the same direction right but in some different speeds same direction but in different speeds then vab is equal to va minus vb but then what if they both are moving in opposite directions that is one, one hand is moving upwards second hand is moving downwards then what will happen the velocity of object a with respect to b it will be va minus vb minus of minus vb why right? because va is in positive direction vb is in negative direction i will both again subtract only but then direction matters so one more subtraction sign is added so in this case when these two velocities are in opposite direction it is va plus vb so with this we also complete our second chapter that is motion in a straight line okay so thank you for watching